know thyself, know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. Pretend inferiority and encourage his arrogance. If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight, even though the ruler forbid it. If fighting will not result in victory, then you must not fight even at the ruler's bidding. To fight and conquer in all our battles is not supreme excellence. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in the attack. All men can see these tactics whereby I conquer, but what none can see is the strategy out of which victory is evolved. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. There is no instance of a nation benefiting from prolonged warfare. The opportunity to secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. He who knows when he can fight and when he cannot will be victorious. Know your enemy and know yourself, and you can fight a hundred battles without disaster. Regard your soldiers as your children and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Look on them as your own beloved sons, and they will stand by you even unto death. A good commander is benevolent and unconcerned with fame. The art of war teaches us to rely not on the likelihood of the enemy's not coming, but on our own readiness to receive him not on the chance of his not attacking, but rather on the fact that we have made our position unassailable. The general who wins the battle makes many calculations in his temple before the battle is fought. The general who loses makes but few calculations beforehand. Balk the enemy's power, force him to reveal himself, if ignorant both of your enemy and yourself, you are certain to be in peril. The general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service for his sovereign, is the jewel of the kingdom. He who is prudent and lies in wait for an enemy who is not, will be victorious. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. If we know that our own men are in a condition to attack, but are unaware that the enemy is not open to attack, we have gone only halfway towards victory. Hence that general is skillful in attack, whose opponent does not know what to defend, and he is skillful in defense whose opponent does not know what to attack. For them to perceive the advantage of defeating the enemy, they must also have their rewards. <laughs>